Good evening. I'm Jude Teo, Perth Obstetrician, Gynecologist and Fertility Specialist. It has been a long day. It's 9 p.m. now. I'll do a, a video before I catch up with a little bit of paperwork. In this video, I'm going to discuss about the menstrual cycle. As we know, a regularly ovulating woman should be having her period on average once a month. I'm going to explain a few terms used to describe menstrual irregularities. First one is amenorrhea. Um, a means usually absence in Latin, menorrhea means period. So amenorrhea, absence of period. The second term is oligomenorrhea. Um, oligo means infrequent, menorrhea means period. Oligomenorrhea means infrequent periods. Before we go on and discuss more about this menstrual irregularities, firstly, I would like to um, explain the physiology, the normal pattern, how the, the women's body control ovulation and menstruation. Bef um, before I start, let me get my prop. Right, here we go. Those who have seen my last video might have seen my daughter was playing with this model when she was visiting my office. I think she's pretty good. Maybe I should get her to help me to see my patients. Now, this is the uh, women's reproductive organ. You can see the womb. Then you have the tubes, you have the ovaries, and you have the vagina. Firstly, to control the system is uh, the body releases hormones. The hormones released by a small little gland here, um, which is a pea-sized gland just below the brain. It's called the pituitary. The pituitary releases FSH and LH um, that controls the uh, reproductive organs um, inside the pelvis or in the lower tummy, lower abdomen. Now, this hormones, the FSH and the LH, acts like a fuel to the ovaries. It's like, you know, with a car, you need fuel for the system to work. So the hormones act like a fuel to the ovaries. In the ovaries, there are a finite number of uh, little seeds. Those are pre primordial follicles or premature eggs. So they are like little seeds waiting to develop into a mature egg. And uh, these seeds, the primordial follicles, they are exhaustible. That means over time, we can run, up, run, up, run out of eggs, such as in menopause. Um, being fed with hormones, FSH and LH, the few um, inside the ovary, the seeds grow into a mature egg, so they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, there's an egg will pop out, being released into the tubes. Um, the little the, the follicles inside the ovary, they release estrogen, which makes the lining grow thicker inside the womb. So um, the lining grows thicker to be ready for the, in case there's an embryo coming in to stick in there to implant. So nice and thick will be good for the embryos to be nurtured when it implants. When there's no pregnancy, the hormone levels drop, drops and the lining is shed like a period. Let's discuss amenorrhea, i.e. the absence of period. Amenorrhea can be caused by an anatomical anomaly. What it means is the, uh, the hormones are all normal, but the shape or form of the womb is the reason a proper menstrual period either cannot be formed or is formed but cannot be uh, shared outside, cannot be flow, that's, it can't flow out from the womb and the vagina. For example, some young girls may notice that they have menstrual pain, but they have never seen their period for many, many years until they are later in their teenage years. This may be because they have blockage of the outlet with either a very tight cervix or you know, in the vagina there are, there are blockage that stops the bleeding from flowing out. There are also some other conditions of the womb, more rarely, that may stop one from having a proper menstrual period um, abnormality inside the womb, the lining or the shape of the womb itself. Aside from that, let's say the anatomical, the structure and form of the womb and the system is normal. Amenorrhea can also be caused by the low hormones from the pituitary as we have talked about. 
it is like you know the, um, like like if you got a, an efficient car brand new car but if you don't put petrol in there's no fuel or well electrical uh, electricity for the new electricity car if there's no energy no fuel then the car won't move so uh, it's like always with no fuel then you can't start the ovulation process the low pituitary hormone levels can be permanent for example, in some individuals, they are born without the ability to produce the FSH and uh, LH hormones. More commonly, it is temporary. So for example, in, in, in acutely stressful environment, the period can stop for a few months for a woman. Thankfully, thankfully in this case, usually it returns when the body starts to cope better, the period starts to uh, return again. Another example is in athletes who is undergoing intensive competitive sports training, more so if they are underweight. In this case, your body may stop the releasing of the FSH, FSH knowledge from the pituitary, so the body can uh, cope um, to have the optimal performance without having to cope with, you know, worried about menstruation or periods. Some other hormones in the body, for example, thyroid hormone, or the milk producing hormones called prolactin may also affect the release of FSH and LH from the pituitary, from the brain side. Apart from that, let's say, look, um, let's go on to the system itself. If we have a normal FSH and LH, the normal field, so let's look at the system itself. So when there's sufficient FSH and LH, the other cause is when the ovaries run out of the seeds to make the eggs and hormones. In this case, no matter how much fuel we put in to push the ovaries, there will be no hormones and periods because all the seeds are being exhausted, for example, less than a thousand left in the body. Naturally, it happens to every woman, um, which is called menopause. Menopause happens um, naturally on average with, at the age of 50 to 52 years old. However, it can also be much earlier or much later for some women or in, in some ethnicity, it can be slightly different as well. Having enough seeds in the ovaries doesn't mean that natural ovulation can happen. For example, high body weight is known to affect the rhythm and stop ovulation. Although we got enough follicles or enough seeds in the ovaries, it may not be ovulating naturally. In polycystic ovarian syndrome, also called PCOS, that's it. PCOS is like too much of a good thing. We were worried about not enough, having not enough seeds, not enough follicles. PCOS is like the other spectrum where you have either, in, that, that's a variable um, intensity or variable range. So we can have a little bit more or some have much, much more. So when you have too many follicles inside the ovaries, it's caused imbalances of the hormones and thus um, and patients may um, may need help. For example, some patients, PCOS patients, um, have a change of their lifestyle or diet, um, resulting the weight loss. And sometimes the body can start to kickstart, and they can start to ovulating, to ovulate um, regularly, and they may fall pregnant naturally very quickly. Um, some patients may need to visit fertility specialists or gynecologists to get hormones or medications to help to kickstart the system to make ovulation happen. Right. To end the video, there's one advice I would like to give. Some patients with PCOS have no periods for a long time. For example, it could be only once a year. Now, this is different from menopause because in menopause, the lining of the woman is very thin. Um, and there's no hormones inside, and which is fine. If you've got no hormones, thin lining, got no periods, it's natural. But in PCOS, the lining can be quite thick because there's a background high hormones levels, um, high hormonal levels. In this case, I would strongly recommend for women with PCOS to see their doctor to seek help. They may need to use hormones to kickstart a period at least once every three to four months. Um, it is not very good to keep the thick lining, the thick endometrium in for too long without being, ch being changed over. In conclusion, unless in, uh, in menopause or, certain, or women using certain hormones, 
women should have regular periods. If there's any concern that there's menstrual irregularities, please visit your doctor and he or she will ask for an ultrasound scan at least to check the form and the shape of the womb and ovaries and also to measure the levels of a few hormones as a baseline and we will take it from there sometimes uh, we might do more tests or provide advice or treatment if needed all right that's all for tonight thank you bye bye